Well, at least Mermaid managed to sort that gill man out in a swift shot. Mermaid, supposedly our pacifist medic, our Hawkeye, as it were, turning into a bit of Rambo there in closed quarters. Now, Whip 2003, after his sonic whip and Kenpo Mike, still listening to the lovely music of Aha and Duran Duran. He's currently working his way through the uh, James Bond theme now. Yim Doc, our last I Have No Mouth survivor. There is the critic still holding up the French end, or uh, as they say, uh, l'end de français. Uh, I think that may be everyone. No shots fired. No shots were fired, dude. I don't like that corridor adjacent to it's him there, Samwise 7 RPG. It has an unfortunate history of having at least one or two gill men stood in it, with sonic cannons just waiting to go off. The problem with the gill men, the sonic cannons often go off prematurely. It's a problem. It's a problem with the female gill men, gill women. Speaking of which, I do wonder about Gil Women and the female aliens. This game is very much, well, anti-man, you know? I have not seen one female alien yet. Or maybe the female aliens just don't go around with uh, breasts under the JJ. Who can say? Maybe all the tentaculars are female, right? Maybe they're like an apex race. If you read the player of games, you'll know exactly what they are. Anything? No, nothing can be seen by the aristocratic. Uh, so the aristocratic can stay in the corridor. I don't think Z is actually a word in French, but... Well, we, we can change the French language if we want. I'm sure... Uh, Vang et toi. Penguins. No, nope, no, nope, that's the. Uh, I think I can. I can count up to twenty in French. I study French, of course, for GCSE, as all good uh, English boys do. Uh, but literally, the sum of that is being able to say le saucisson dans le salle de bain et ouvre le fenêtre. Fermez ta gueule. I think uh, uh, I'm Spanish. Uh, Fermez ferme the bush. Fermez the bush. Shut the mouth. Le cheval sur le chemise. Acton, Nim Doc can see the Gilman. Now, Mr. Gilman. Or Herr Gilman. We will put you through the pain. Of a thousand Nazis' minds. Nimdok, of course, is the only Nazi we have left now that John Locke is dead. Uh, do you remember that that video, part 100, where John Locke was found in the hospital and Flash Gordon abandoned him? You know what? I haven't actually commented on that video and the amount of time it took me doing the dubbing. But, needless to say, it actually has its needless to say, I won't continue. We have a neutralised deep one. Uh, for all the good it will do us seeing as when we get to the next part of this level, the, the deep one will be dead. Being the merciless there, clutching a sonic cannon, saying, ma ha 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 Pitiful good man, who can save you now? And we move up as well. Shrelock has been with us for some time. And another deep one. Okay, Aristocritic, uh, you can't shoot from there, so we will put you around the corner. In the corner. Eh, c'est bon. Oh, the 
movies man can see another deep one. I, I can't recall, I, I can vaguely recall how deep ones attack, they kind of spit on you, don't they? Oh, and give out a hideous belch. That was good shooting there. The movies man has a damn fine accuracy, if I do say so myself. He may well rank as the next great sniper. If I recall, uh, Davidy or David I know, uh, was a good sniper. Was it Davidy? I, honestly, I, I don't recall. We know that there is a dead civilian up there. And as we can't go up the lift or elevator, elevator, uh, I'm presuming that there's an alien sat on top of it. Can we shoot through the wall, Mermaid? Apparently not. Don't shoot yourself. There's a good man. I know Mermaid's a pacifist. But in his head now, he's got an eternal conflict. I want to turn this gun on myself. I've seen too much death. Aristocritic is thinking the, fake, the same thing after missing on what is pretty much a crapshoot, whatever a crapshoot is. I mean, I, yeah, it's something I've heard Americans refer to. I'm guessing it's some strange colonial game where they actually shoot at feces. Samurai 7 RPG. Samurai 7 RPG, of course, is best when he is teamed up with Whip 2003. For obvious reasons that I will not go into in this video. We will take the Gill Man's ammunition just in case he finds a Vita chamber and is resuscitated. He will find himself quite harmless. With 2003 feeling somewhat estranged from Samwise 7 RPG in this mission. Yeah, that weapon's no good now. Okay, what can we see? Nothing. That doesn't give me a great deal of confidence. Ah. Hmm. Maybe you just can't go up? Oh! Kill man! Well, Kenpo Mike, if you shoot at that range, you're going to knock yourself out. There we go. Lucky that there was no reaction fire from the gill man there. Kenpo Mike is not an Aquanaut that I particularly want to lose. Because he has, just like the movies man, he has shown himself as remarkably capable. Okay, Sri Lock. breathes a sigh of relief. Not only has he cleared a room, but he's also got cover over the next alien round. Another deep one. Now they're all clustered in one area in this mission, it makes it a lot easier for me to kill them. Oh, and we appear to have blackened the strut. Strutter! I really like Rock and Roll. No, you really like Limousine. You like the way the wheels roll. You like my seven-inch leather heels. Why do I know the lyrics to songs by Kiss? It's one of those great mysteries that will never be solved. Actually, being a role player, and that's what I am. Finally, Ariston Critic. Uh, I do like the showboating of bands like Kiss and the makeup and everything. It makes for interesting characters on the stage. A lot more interesting than a band that, like, let's say, Coldplay that just sort of stand around and don't do much. Saying that, as I've said before, I've been to see the Pet Shop Boys live. And they... Well, you may imagine that it's just two guys stood on a stage, but it's one of the best shows you've ever seen. Someone just died. God damn it, I wish I knew who. I hope it wasn't the movies, man. I wish it was that guy Shreed. Oh, wait, sorry, I didn't say that. Who shot at him, though? Shreelock isn't brave enough, he's gonna hide. I think it might have been the movies, man. Well, nuts. I really shouldn't have complimented him. 
clearly the aliens have intercepted our transmission and when I said he's a really good aquanaut and a really good shot the gill men said right that's who we're targeting next whip 2003 can't take it he doesn't want to be up there not with uh, not with him he needs to get down with Samy 7 RPG stat what does stat mean fast now statistically Statistically speaking, I don't know, but I just fancy uh, having a sleep, you know. Ah, see, there are gill men in this corridor, but fortunately they're facing the wrong way. And fortunately, Samwise 7 RPG has enough units to hide. Alright, Ray Cloud. Good shooting. Aristocritic, of course, can't get around there, because Samwise 7 RPG is blocking the doorway. Has that ever happened to you before, Tim? Have you blocked a doorway and prevented someone else from getting past? I bet you have. It sounds like the sort of thing you'd do. I know your kind. Door blockers. And you think you, think you can just push us around and stand in our way and... Yeah, it was the movie's man, wasn't it? Like you're entitled. Shrelock there taking a nasty gunshot to the chest, but fortunately it isn't fatal because Shrelock only has one lung and it just went straight through the space where the other lung should be. He's not like a Time Lord where he has two hearts, he does actually only have one lung due to being an excessive smoker. You could argue that anyone who smokes even one cigarette is an excessive smoker because there's not really any reason to smoke. But smoking is acceptable even in this dystopian future. You could say that everyone has the intelligence to know that smoking is bad for you, but nobody has the wisdom to know not to do it. To use a D&D &D analogy. Oh, hello! Uh, that guy's not an alien. Okay, we're cleaning out the house, as Tom Jones might say. Alright, burn a hole in that wall, that's the critic. I didn't mean that one, I meant that one. Oh, damn. Okay, and you've got, now got to move up one, thank you. And Mermaid can't move for shit anyway. I'm going to miss the movies, man. Now, what can we fire this torpedo at? Nimdok has gone mad with power. It's an underwater weapon. We can't fire it at anything. Well, had I known that, I wouldn't have had anyone take them along. Now who feels like a complete Charlie? Ah, there's the lone gunman. It's a nice reaction fire there by, I think, Ming, or it would have been. Had it hit, which it didn't. Raycloud doing the brave man thing and uh, going into the darker areas of the ship. Of course, going to have to cover the other side. He's finally uh, picked up his balls, stuffed them back in, and become a man. I don't think we can shoot through that wall, Aristocritic. But it was worth a try. I appreciate your... What would the word be? Figure? If nothing else. But I'm not the first person to tell him that. Your enthusiasm is commendable. You shot that gilman in the femoral artery, Shreela. Good going. Now, with any luck, that will be the last alien on this map. And so far we've only lost one aquanaut in poor old the movies, man. It's a damn shame. Oh, damn, oh, wait. A bloody shame, but sacrifices have to be made. Oh, tits! You 
can't uh, make an omelette. No, I'm saying you can't make an omelette. I've heard how you make omelettes and it's not well. Not well at all. I can make an omelette. But I've got experience in these sorts of matters. Well, Nimdok, there's not really much point in you carrying this underwater exclusive weapon. Oh no, we lost Gorister as well. How did I ever forget him? Well, in this mission we can actually neutralise some of our enemies in a uh, pacifist kind of way. See, less action than a pacifist's pistol. Alright, and away we go. Hello again. Just wanted to go and get a drink. And here we are. So, as we gain more and more experience in this kind of caper, we are of course going to complete these missions with a bit more alacrity. Less dallying around, dallying, dithering, dallying, dithering, withering and pithering, pissing about, shaking our you-know-whos, you-know-whats or something. I still wonder at this transportation pad in this trawler, or cruise liner, whichever, I think we're on a trawler in this one. The cruise liners have a horrifying habit of containing Zarquids and biodrones and things like that. Yeah, that uh, iridescent transporter that we seem to be stood on looks very high tech for your average trawler. Did you notice the few cabins that this trawler had as well? And in fact the the plushness of them. Very fine really for just a mere cargo transporter. I have a feeling that there may be more than meets the eye to this trawler. That it may be carrying something far from innocent, if you know what I mean. Oh you don't know what I mean. Well, let me spell it out for you. A Z L U P. Mm hmm. Now you get me. Anyway, less said about that the better. And it looks like one of the aliens just found one of them. At least whip 2003 and hello. Good thing about team points is they never get reaction fire because they don't have any ranged weapons. Ooh, and what can we see? Another deep one. Now, at the same time, they do get snapshots. They can, or they can uh, just spit at whip. So that is why whip is now hiding in a crate. Very honourable action. Samwise 7, being the ally of WIP 2003, is of course going to be taking the same action. Let's let's do this like a SWAT team. Oh, oh. Okay, that was a bit unfortunate. Did Ming the Merciless just die for a second time? Was that Ming? I think it might have been. Ming may have just had his chips, as they say. How is it the Ray Cloud has stayed alive for so long? It, it, if I recall, his accuracy has been piss poor as well. Oh, damn, there's Gill Men all around. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Well, Ray Cloud, I don't rate your chances. Unless Nimdok can save you. <laughs> Nimdok, Obergruppenführer of Police Squad. I suppose it should be uh, the Polizei. Oh no, Ming the Merciless is still alive. 
God, I should pay attention to who my men are so that I can properly commemorate them when they die. Because right now I just look so insensitive. We could load a grenade up there, I suppose, but it seems a bit overkill. And there may be civilians up there as well, of course, which we don't want to be responsible for the blowing up of, or whom, rather. Don't worry, I will uh, record who's died, and I promise you, if you're watching this, that uh, I will remember your name at some point, and please don't take offence at the fact that I've forgotten you. It couldn't have been Mermaid the Medic, could it? because Mermig has likewise been with us for quite a while, and he's had his own little... Oh no, Mermig's still about as well. Well, whoever you were, I salute you. I salute you, whoever the hell you were. Who were you? What are you? Finally, Ray Cloud justifies his hefty paycheck. Actually, look at his pitiful rank. He doesn't get a hefty paycheck. He barely, barely meets minimum wage. He survives on tips alone. And in this job, you don't get many tips, especially when all the civilians are killed. It's been a while since we've had a proper terror mission on a coastal resort or desert island or something like that. It's those kinds of uh, bikini clad or flowery shirt wearing tourist types that give the best tips or so I understand. I wouldn't know because clack click bang or well the gentleman gamer if I recall I, when I first had an aquanaut an aquanaut in the morning, an aquanaut in the evening, an aquanaut each day. Um, what was I saying? Ah yes, I think I died in my first mission. I'd have to go way back in the videos to find out when that happened. Here's a little mission for you, loyal viewers. Excelsior! Uh, here's a little mission for you. Find out which video I died in. First time. That was uh, about, I think two guns were fired at once there. We've got a John Woo style Gilman jumping around the inside of the trawler. And I still don't know who's dead. We don't know where Barry is. I remember the first time I played Resident Evil, and needless to say, I was under the age limit for playing that game. Didn't I have naughty parents? Oh, mummy, this is why you're the medic. Do you even have a medikit? Quirty man, or quirt man, rather. Sorry. No, you, you can't show mummy how it's done. Yeah, I remember the first time I played Resident Evil, and I was absolutely petrified to go into one room, from one room to the next. I just kept returning to the main hallway and saving it on the typewriter there, because it was that scary. And I know that sounds ridiculous now, I was quite young, admittedly. But, back then, but when you first played a game like that, it's because there were so few games like it, except the original Lonely in the Dark, I suppose. There was, um... No real game where you had to limit the amount of ammunition you were using. And in the first Resident Evil, I vaguely recall the ammunition being particularly scarce, or scarce, scarce. So, I was going around unloading bullet after bullet into every single zombie I found, which resulted in some particularly tense situations later on in the game. Oh, well, we know, now we know where the screaming civilians are coming from. Well done, not shooting the barrels there, Aristocritic. Must have been very tempting, going back to your Donkey Kong days. To get out the magic hammer. Oh, uh, 
um, Whip 2003 you can see a Gilman all the way down there, but as he doesn't have a ranged weapon, he's going to have to sneak up on the Gilman. Yeah, good luck with that. Who died? Who is it that was shot? I must have been mentioning them just a few minutes ago, back when we were on the previous part of this mission. Do I really pay that little attention to my Aquanauts? Or maybe it's just that I can't cope with this much death. I, I'm like Mermig and his internal dialogue. I've seen too much violence. And now it just becomes what... It's like cannon fodder. It, it's just nameless, nameless drones becoming crosses on a hill. Except in cannon fodder they did have names like Elvis and Sarge, I think. Yeah. Uh, John Hare. He's never been so much fun. Well, so much for sneaking up on him and whip. Um, you know what? I don't think you're, you've got much of a chance in hell. You got no chance in hell. Whip 2003. We'll take the medikit. We won't bother taking your corpse, whoever the hell you are. I don't even think that guy was an aquanaut. I think it was a civilian that stole the movie's man's outfit. And we can't shoot through that wall, it seems. Until the end of this mission, when we get told we've lost three aquanauts, I'm not going to believe that one of them died. I think that was just a civilian dressed up like an aquanaut. Maybe it was a fancy dress but on the trawler when the aliens invaded. Because for the life of me, I don't know who's dead. Does that make me a bad person? No, it just makes me a bad narrator. Well, it also makes Whip 2003 a dead aquanaut. I should have spent less time ruminating about the dead and tried to concentrate on living. Either you, after all, you either get busy living or get busy dying. Or so Morgan Freeman said. So, and Tim Robbins. And it seems in Whip 2003's case, especially, he got busy dying. Fortunately, Samwise 7 RPG isn't wearing his helmet, and so hasn't received the radio message that Whip 2003 is dead as some doo-doos. Otherwise, he would be engaging in a kill frenzy at this point. Probably on civilians. Sam Y7 RPG has been known to enter a civilian location and just randomly kill people. He's been decommissioned for quite some time and only just brought back because of his noted psychopathy and unwillingness to deal with the harshness of the job. 